Ahoy mateys, I'm the French Monk and welcome to Corsair's Legacy. Now you guys know I love covering the Age of Sail, as well as conflicts fought with swords and muskets. Having made quite a few videos on games covering this era. Now I was actually contacted by the developers for this one through a comment on one of my old Holdfast Nations at War naval gameplay videos I released back in 2019. And something about the concept of their game piqued my interest. So naturally I checked out the trailer and my first impression was one of recognition. I was like, hey, this is, this is like that Pirates of the Caribbean game I played back when I was a little young French monk. So uh, I started digging into their channel and work and I came across a video where they mentioned that this project is actually made for the fans of Sea Dogs, allowing them to play a new slash modern game that builds further upon the legendary series about pirates. So for those of you who are not familiar with Sea Dogs, it is a Russian role-playing video game developed by Akela and published by Bethesda Softworks. You as a player act as a captain of a ship, you can serve as a privateer to a European power, or you can become a pirate. This game was released in the year 2000 and was followed up by four sequels, one of which is the very game I have fond memories about. Namely, the one released in 2003, and which tied in to Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Whilst it is called Pirates of the Caribbean, it was originally developed under the name Sea Dogs 2, and in all fairness has few connections to the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which came out around the same time. Last year I believe I actually played the New Horizons mod for this uh, game of 2003, which uh, I really enjoyed by the way, it added many new features and so much content, it was incredible. I should actually play it again, I know I have it around here somewhere. Anyways, Yuri Ursus Rogash, I hope I didn't mispronounce their name, was actively involved in the development of the Sea Dogs games since Pirates of the Caribbean and he was an art director of the suspended Sea Dogs 4 game. The idea of Corsair's legacy came after talks with Yuri, who said, after asked if he believed in a sequel of Sea Dogs, that the probability of such a sequel is no more than 3% giving the Ukrainian team of developers a number of reasons. The first one being the niche of the product, and thus it having a small fanbase. Then there's the fact one needs to make three games in one. It's an RPG, a naval simulator and an open world game with the map mode function. And there's the bankruptcy of Akela, of course, the creator of the series. Now, Corsair's legacy is handled by a Ukrainian team of developers with a limited budget, using money from their other projects to work on this new pirate game. I believe this project was announced in 2021, and here we are, two years further, with a demo version of the game available on Steam. So I will explain a bit of what the game is all about, uh, whilst showing you some of the gameplay I recorded whilst playing the demo. Corsair's Legacy is a linear pirate adventure game that will have three different endings, depending on the choices that you made during the story. You play as Rufus Monroe, who is an adventurous smuggler, transporting cargoes through naval patrols in the Caribbean. I suggest we listen a bit to his story. I wouldn't call Catherine Peake the most punctual smuggler, but integrity is rare in our business. Guaranteeing that your partner won't break their word is worth a lot. It's worth noting that she had other strengths that certainly made up for a single flaw. That zoom though. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm, I'm not the only one, right? Like, why did they zoom like that? I mean, they're not wrong. She's got, she's got some good assets on her. I decided to let myself stretch and entertain the crew at the same time. For them... The greatest satisfaction is watching good fights. Thanks to Catherine and her ability to get along with many men, especially over a mug of something stronger, we knew the roots of all the colony's patrols. So we had the right place and we didn't have to fear uninvited guests. I was just beginning to get a taste for it when a ship appeared on the horizon. Alas, not the Catherine Schooner. She was a Spanish warship patrolling the shores of Trinidad and Tobago. 
The rendezvous point was chosen wisely. It was a secluded little bay, allowing us to hide a small ship behind a low cliff in lush jungle. And yet, the Spaniards were coming right at us. The situation was beginning to get out of hand. It was not in our plans to go to jail or the noose in San Jose Square. Because we needed time to get out of the bay, we had to give the Spaniards a good head start. So we were forced to accept the fight. So a raid goes wrong and Rufus and his crew come face to face with a Spanish patrol ship, which starts off a new adventure and a dangerous voyage throughout the Caribbean. From smuggling goods through heavily guarded waters to fighting these epic naval battles. I must apologize for being so bad at the start, it did take me quite a bit to get used to the controls and the combat mechanics. I should mention this game is uh, going to release as early access this year, so it is fair to say it will run into some bugs, whether gameplay wise or visuals, it is all still a work in progress. But that is what you guys are here for, right? To give feedback in the comment section down below. They can use all the feedback they, uh, they need as much as possible because they will be able to plan further work and make the necessary changes in game mechanics based on said feedback. Whilst it was a bit chunky at times, I did enjoy the combat mechanics. It is difficult to block and parry, but that could just be me being a scrub at video games. It is nice and rewarding once you manage to get the combos going and then you can easily take on three or more opponents. There are some aspects about the uh, naval gameplay that again remind me of the Pirates of the Caribbean game though I do think that the boats go a bit too fast. I like the fast forward button but even without it the ships are a lot faster compared to what I remember from the older games that it's inspired by. Don't know if that is a deliberate choice, I would probably prefer the ships to be a bit slower, maybe less maneuverable. What do you guys think? Uh, like, I like the visuals, I'm not really good with words when it comes to describing it, but it's a very stylized game and purposely done so, of immersing the player into that world of piracy. There's a lot of people fighting on the deck when boarding ships, I like that. There's also the, uh, the good old looting mechanic when it comes to entering ships. You got the main deck and then there's the captain's cabin where you fight a one-on-one. -on -one. Again, don't judge me for being bad guys, please, I, I beg of you. After the battle with the Spanish patrol ship, you repair your ship with some help of the locals, then it is off to intercept yet another Spanish ship with some extremely valuable goods, as your fellow partner in crime Catherine managed to obtain this information by getting a lonely young man drunk. So off to engage in piracy, two ships versus the one, an unfair battle but hey, we are pirates after all, we don't play by the rules. And after finding out the location of a convoy of ships carrying gold to the old world, as well as their route, the demo ends. I found it very enjoyable, it took me a little less than an hour to finish it, and the length of the full campaign slash story will be around 5 to 9 hours on the easiest of difficulties. 
But yeah, that was the demo for Corsair's Legacy. An interesting project. I love the style they're going for. It's got quite a bit of potential. And it did manage to bring back a few childhood memories of mine, which I can appreciate. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think of Corsair's Legacy. Feedback is always welcome for any development team. And that having said, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care everyone.